The CR920 from Shadow Systems has a ton of great features, all of which I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna tell you if all of these great features actually lead to a better carry gun. But first, we're gonna take first shots. Let's get into the review. All right, here it is, the CR920 from Shadow Systems, the gun that may replace the Shield Plus as my everyday carry. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you officially if this gun is going to replace the Shield Plus as my daily carry, or the Spectre Comp. I've actually been carrying the Spectre Comp here recently uh, a lot too. E either way, I'm gonna tell you if I'm gonna work this gun into the rotation or not. Now I've already done a first look on the CR920. We're doing a little bit different format now. So typically what you're going to see from here going forward is like first shots and then thousand round update and involved, keep these guns kind of involved more and give you more of an update, more of kind of a rolling update as well. So make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss any videos from us. Let's go ahead and get right into the CR920. So We've already done a first look. If you wanna take a look at this gun compared to some other popular options, I might do a little bit of that here, but mainly that was in the first video where I give you specs and we kinda of do an overview, a first look per se at the CR920. This is all about the shooting, man. And this is a big part, this is a big deal to me because if this gun doesn't shoot as good or better as the Shield Plus, I'm probably, it's probably not gonna replace that gun. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't carry this gun, but it won't replace that as my everyday carry. So let's do an overview really quick of the features that make the CR920 special. If you look at it, it's basically a custom gun straight from the factory. You have these uh, angled, like forward angled slide serrations in the front here even has like this little ledge here. So if you're somebody that does press checks, I don't do this a lot, but if you do, you have a nice ledge there, plus the slide serrations to do that. Lightning cut right here in the slide, fluted barrel. It's really awesome. You know, they kind of lighten up the slide, lighten up the barrel, but also aesthetically, the pistol is just sexy. I don't know that there's any dispute there. It's my opinion, but I don't know that there's much dispute there. The gun looks good. Same angled serrations in the back there. Of course, it is optics ready as well. You have these cuts right here in the top of the slide. I don't know that this provides any functionality. It just looks cool. You have blacked out rear sights with a tritium front dot there. Nice, bright, yellowish, greenish type of dot there. And as we go throughout and we talk about the shooting, I will say that the sight contrast here is fantastic. Love it. You have a somewhat of a little bit of a ledge along with the stippling up here for your thumbs, right? So if you do completely thumbs forward, um, then, then you have a little area right there where your thumbs can sit. This grip texturing is somewhere between an MMP M2.0, which was really aggressive, and maybe like your, uh, I don't know, the P365 or something. It's got a good texturing on it. It's not gonna tear up your skin. I carried this gun a little bit already, but with a flush 10 round magazine, this gun actually is very short. Uh, overall height on the gun is 4.27 inches with the flush mag and 4.79 with the extended, okay? So you have the one 10 round mag and then the 13 round extended. Beaver tail back here, you have the same type of cuts in the back of the, the, the back plate right here, uh, like you do on the top of the slide and the same kind of cuts, aesthetically speaking, on the magazine release as well. Getting the mags out of the gun, no issue. They pop right out, which is a good thing. One thing I like that they did too is the back strap is actually separated from the magazine itself. So no issue with the fatty part of your hand actually hitting that magazine and stopping it from coming back down. Double undercut under the trigger guard right here so you can get a nice high grip generally a low bore axis on this gun. You see your extractor and all that good stuff right there. It kind of looks like a, a, a baby Glock in a way. Of course, there's no finger grooves or anything like that. 
and you have more of a swept back look back here as opposed to what a Glock traditionally would look like. And as far as the grip angle, it is nothing, to me, it's nothing like a Glock. Very minimal adjustment. The way the gun points, it's natural with very little movement. I, I really do like that a lot. That makes a big difference, especially when you're drawn from a holster, when you don't have to move the gun a whole lot and it's just right there on target, ready to go. Now, I don't know what happened to that first shot. That one really got away from me. Of course, chambered in nine millimeter, and you do have a rail up here if you want to put any kind of attachment. So, breakdown of the gun, let me show you that really quick. Make sure it's clear, pull the trigger, just like a Glock. Just did notice, it's a dual captive recoil spring, but this thing doesn't sit in there very well. I had no issues with this at all, so I don't even know that it's that big of a deal. I just, normally there's more tension here between the underside of the barrel and where, you know, where the rod actually sits into the bottom of the frame. You know, normally you can't just pull it out, you know, like that. But again, I had no issues, so I don't even know if it means anything. Rails, points of contact, ejector, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and put this back on. Super easy to take apart and clean just like that. Just now, one thing you're going to notice in some of the shooting that you've seen, I may have even already mentioned it at this point in the video, but something I rarely mention with carry guns is the magazine and specifically the extended magazine. But it was so noticeable with this gun that I have to mention it. And me and Mrs. Hegshot both noticed with the extended magazine in there that gives you more of a full grip, we shot the gun way better, considerably better. Groups were better, it felt better, it just, it made that big of a difference that I wanted to point that out. Now, no, typically I don't point that out because the shorter it is, right? It's a carry gun. You're trying to conceal this part right here, right? Being the grip. So, you know, you're gonna, there's a trade off there. And so it, you want the gun overall length to be as short as possible when you're carrying because you're trying to conceal the grip of the gun. But it was so noticeable that I think I would actually take the little bit of extra length because I shoot this gun so much better with the extended magazine. That was good. Let me show you the trigger here really quick. All right, so you have a little bit of take up here. You hit the wall. And it feels like it stacks up just before the break. Reset. So it kind of stacks just a little bit. You have a little bit of play in the trigger after the wall and then it breaks. Boom, let me, let me pull it on the gauge. Now, full disclaimer here, I don't think this gauge is totally accurate. So it's pulling six pounds, one ounce. Let's try it one more time just to make sure. Six pounds, two ounces, okay, so fairly consistent. The gun doesn't have to have a two and a half pound trigger to be a good shooter. 
But my biggest gripe on this gun is everything you see is, is custom looking at least. And functionally, uh, the gun is incredible. They did a lot of great things here with this gun, but the trigger, it just kind of seems like an afterthought. For a gun like this, now I get it in a standard Glock, or, you know, whatever, you know, you kind of do upgrades and stuff if, if that's something that you do. That's not something I do on a carry gun. I don't want to, I don't want to mess with the internals of the trigger. I did a video on this recently, like what not to do with your carry gun. And I'll leave a card to that as well, if you want to watch that. But one of the things was I don't mess with the internals, trigger, things like that on my carry gun. I just don't do that. Now, if you're adding an optic, that's, that's different, especially a gun made for an optic. But Regardless, the trigger to me is one of the most disappointing parts about this gun. I mean, honestly, the gun, it's not like the gun was inaccurate. I don't want to portray that, and I don't think that that is being shown in the shooting. That's not what I'm trying to say, but I was looking for a gun that's as accurate as the Shield Plus or more accurate. Speaking of the Shield Plus, let's just bring it in here really quick so you get an idea of what it looks like versus this gun. They're essentially the same size almost all the way around. It looks like the Shield... I keep hitting the magazine release right there, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the shield is just a little bit longer, but I mean, they are so close size-wise. And like I said, that's been one of the best, if not the best carry gun that I've ever carried. That's the best shooting carry gun I think I've ever, ever shot. You know, the Spectre Comp is right there. I mean, it just, it's that good. So I was expecting that out of this. Now, here's what I will say, pros, the gun, looks aesthetically fantastic. More importantly, it worked from shot number one all the way through. I want to say I put 250 rounds through it, something like that. Okay. Slide serrations are cut deep. The gun is fairly easy to charge. The smaller the gun, the stiffer the springs, generally speaking, and the gun did a fine job. You have lightning cuts. It's lightweight. It handles the recoil good. You have a low bore axis. The grip texturing and the way the grip is designed is very natural. It points natural. Love it. But what I don't like, oh, I like the sights too, by the way. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. The gun's comfortable too, man. It's comfortable to carry. I'm 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 digging it, but what I will say is that I'm just not a huge fan of this trigger. I, I just I, oh man, I can only imagine if this trigger was like, I, I keep saying it, I know, I know it's probably annoying, but like the Shield Plus, if it was just even, it doesn't even have to be like the Shield Plus, but even if it just broke here, instead of stacking up, I think this gun would be amazing. But what I'm going to say and what I'm gonna do, and this is the reason that I'm changing the format here a little bit instead of just doing a review and then we move on past it, is because I wanna spend some more time with this gun. I wanna put a thousand rounds through it and see where I'm at. Not every gun you pick up is going to be like this amazing shooting gun and you're just like totally connected with it. Sometimes these things do take time and that's why I've changed the format. That's why I'm gonna put another 750 rounds through the gun. We're gonna revisit it here soon enough, and then I'm gonna tell you officially if it's gonna replace or get in the rotation. Like I said, it's kind of been in the rotation already. Is it gonna replace the Shield Plus? No, but I don't mind putting this gun, I don't mind wearing this gun on my hip. I, I'm starting to trust it more. Um, but I just need to run some more rounds through it, man. I got to get my accuracy better with this gun. It's me, not the gun, but a better trigger. We'd probably be having a different conversation at this point. The trigger is not everything. Don't hear the wrong thing. Hear what I'm saying. The gun is accurate. It's more accurate than I am. But 
having a better trigger in the gun will essentially help you get better shots on target. Better shots. That doesn't mean you won't be able to shoot the gun at all. You know, if I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with this thing, is that the gun's issue or mine? It'd probably be mine still. But there's two sides to this. You know, you don't have to have... I'm not even saying this gun, the trigger needs to be lightened. I really don't think it needs to be. It just needs to be cleaned up. It just needs to be, the internals are something. They just need to be cleaned up, polished a little bit, and this thing will probably be incredible. It does make somewhat of a difference if you know how to shoot and know the fundamentals already. It does. I mean, a lighter trigger will help you, but I don't wanna go in here and start lightening up a trigger that I am carrying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get better behind this gun so I can carry it more confidently and maybe even work it into the rotation. Some people go directly to just changing a component out which is gonna in turn make them a better shooter. Obviously, I think that if this had a better trigger, then I, you know, I, I think it would be uh, better in my hands maybe, but I'm taking the opposite approach and I'm just gonna get better with this gun the way it is, and that's it. So I'd love to hear what your opinion is down in the comments below about the Shadow System CR920. If you have one, if you carry one, whatever the case may be, let me know what you think down below. If there's any guns you wanna see in the future or any ideas, I'm always learning from you guys and always getting ideas from y'all, and I read the comments quite often. Make sure you leave those things down below. See you in the next one, and as always, hold them down.